Hi, welcome to Ghost Willow Manor. Um, I've showed you my property and gardens a bunch of times. Uh, this is what inspires me to create uh, nature, spirit realm kind of stuff. Um, and it can be a lot of different types of beings that, that I enjoy uh, creating and painting and um, making costuming for. So you can become it. And this is my, um, my wildflower, now wildflower, sort of heart-shaped garden. It was heart-shaped uh, years ago when I first built it, about 16 years ago to be exact, when I was pregnant with my daughter. I, I wanted to have a, a beautiful garden, and I did. And I've neglected it over the years, and I've, I've let some things take over, and... Um, now I'm starting to take it back and um, picking and choosing what wildflowers I want, what wildflowers I don't want. But one of the features that I used to have in it was the center was a lovely place and area. And that's been restored today thanks to some workmen. Because that's a lot of sand for me to fuck with. The discrepancy in the sand here. Some of it is uh, darker than the other, but it's pretty great. And it's a nice little nest. And um, hopefully, I'll I'll get the tool that has been working for me uh, to cut back some of the weeds and let the uh, the desired plants that I like to grow and possibly plant some seeds. I never got around to that in the spring. But, um, uh, here's a, this is not a wildflower, actually. This was a perennial I planted years ago, so it survived. These are weeds. This is a weed I liked. And these are some weeds that I like. They're chive type things. There's also happens to be these things, and we'll see how big they get. I really like them. Sticker bushes, not so much. These are gonna leave. Leave me alone. Anyway, I thought you'd like to see all the sand. And so that kind of inspires mermaid stuff with this lovely view of the pond that we have. Look at that. Do you see it? Let's see if Anyway, that's um, one step at a time. Uh, now that I've moved the studio to my home and home base here, and it's just been easier for me to give my property the attention that it actually deserves. Running a shop was lovely, but at this point, I want to reclaim a lot of this property, my house, everything. Uh, including my life <laughs> and that's all been going well and the art's been going well too I've taken a break this week to just relax uh, after my trip to England uh, Three Wishes Fairy Festival was incredible um, Cornwall weather was challenging for me traveling abroad if it had been local I'd had a vehicle and some things would have been easier for me so I'm trying to work it out so I can go again, but maybe not have to take the merchant tent and maybe borrow one over there or share a space with someone who's willing to let me. And um, that's my plan. My next uh, show is in Oregon in Florence, and that's at the Second Star Festival. And it's at the Florence, uh, I believe, Convention Center, but I'm not... I gotta get that. I gotta get that right. Uh, but it's it's a cultural center in uh, Florence, and it'll be great. Toby Froud will be there, and some uh, Nimble, the puppet makers on the West Coast. And I, I'm I'm actually excited about it. It's not a huge festival because it's not uh, it's all indoors, but it's it looks like it's going to be really sweet and artistic and creative and uh, the one after that two weeks later is fairy worlds and we know it's all those things and outdoors and um 
I hope to inspire people to come to both, really. Um, if you're in Oregon, if you're going to stay for a, a bit of a time, uh, those would be two great back-to-back -back festivals to get. Uh, Florence is a great beach town. I've been there before. I really liked it. That's why I want to go back again. And of course, uh, the location they have at Fairy World is Horning's Hideout. And I know they changed it from a place that a lot of people liked, but I didn't like the other place. Uh, I like Horning's Hideout better because it's more fairy-ish. And um, as you can tell, I am always surrounded by Fae Spirit. It's pretty great. I absolutely love the daylilies too. All those daylilies uh, came from some property of my children's father. And uh, I think they're like 75 year old bulbs that I had divided and put here. And um, this particular flower was given to me by my friend um, Dot and she's a fiber artist from when I was way back 16 years ago uh, with the artist of Winmore when we were kicking it up and doing lots of stuff back then and um, I made some very good mentors and friends there and people with a lot of wisdom and knowledge they were all over 40 okay and um but they were some really kick-ass ladies and I miss them and some of them aren't here anymore but I do have some of their flowers which is kind of cool and I think I think Dot's still here I just haven't seen her in quite some time and um I'm excited about all these things coming I don't even know what the hell this is so if you know what this is, tell me. But it looks pretty freaking cool to me. It looks like a dandelion going crazy. And if I wind up not liking its flowers, it might go. But we'll see. I don't know if these are just like little beady things or what. So if you know what that is, tell me. Tell me do. I'm trying to stamp out pokeweed. That's my mission in life. And this video is going on way longer than you wanted it to go. And, um, sorry about that. But that's my update on my heart garden with the zen in it. This is an untended strawberry patch slash, ooh, looks like more morning glories. But I don't know if uh, any of the gourds volunteered again. So we'll see what comes up. I'm a terrible gardener. I used to be very attentive, but other things capture my attention now. So I'm trying to make it so it's the kind of garden that can stand on its own.